We should just do a Bronson section, I think, right here. Yeah, sure. Okay, so the next one we uh, had on the list was Death Hunt. Johnson, we've got a bad situation on here. I have a bunch of savages out here just aching to splatter you all over the place. They don't want your side told. Now, if you don't come in with me, that's all the excuse they'll need. They'll either kill you or get themselves killed trying. You can't stop it. Hold it! And both Elric and I were seeing this for the first time. So, uh -huh. so that was a blast uh, for me. Uh, yeah. And I, I was telling you right before we started the show, I was like, oh, my favorite scene is where uh, Harrison Ford says, I didn't kill my wife. And Tommy Lee's like, I don't care. I'm like, this, <laughs> this, <laughs> it feels like the fugitive took so much from Death Hunt. There's so many <laughs> moments where the kind of connection between them was just right on. There's a scene where he pulls up uh, binoculars and he yeah, says, yeah, yeah. Bronson and Bronson pulls up binoculars at the same time and they both smile. And I'm like, oh, that's that moment. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, no, absolutely, yeah. Now, yeah. Death Hunt is a lot. Death Hunt is a is, is a lot of fun. Death Hunt is a really good example of how um, there's a lot of times you see a movie from 20 years ago or 30 years ago or whatever, and um, it doesn't hold up or it doesn't age that well. And then there's every once in a while, then not every once in a while, but the, but then there's the the times that a movie that just seemed okay, you know fine, entertaining enough when you hate to see it. But as time has gone on, it seems better than that. It seems, oh, wow, we didn't realize how good we had it. That was actually pretty, that was actually pretty interesting. Death Hunt is one of those kind of movies. I remember, uh, I saw when it came out, and it was one of those things where both Bronson and Lee Marvin hadn't been doing the best movies, like for the couple of years leading up to Death Hunt. And, um, and so, if they had done this movie five years earlier, it would have been like a really big deal that Charles Bronson and Lee Marvin were doing a movie together. They were both still stars and, and uh, they were both still stars, um, but it, it was, a you know, they were on the beginning of being passe by the time that they did Death Hunt. And I even remember reading like the Herald Examiner review of Death Hunt and it was like, a, a, Playing in theaters quickly for a week before it you know, before it moves to HBO. Uh, <laughs> if you feel entitled, you can go see uh, if you're, go see Death Hunt. Um, and I saw it. I saw it the week that it came out, and I really liked it. Um, but it didn't really. I, I I didn't think it was that special. I thought it was it was entertaining, and I enjoyed it. And it was, well done and I, I liked it and then I forgot about it um, and then I, I watched it on DVD about I don't know about 10 years ago and it was, oh, I, this, is, this is better than I remember it being actually this is, this is pretty good uh, I like this and th some of the things that I remember that I liked about it like that weird dynamic between those two weird guys on the uh, in the posse you know, you know uh, Maury Chaikin uh, and the other guy I don't know the other guy but Maury yeah. Chaikin yeah Henning Schlemner or something like that. Uh, okay. I, I, the guy who looks like John Williams. All right. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. He does. Oh my God. That's hilarious. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, I, uh, I I liked that way back then. But anyway, so I ended up, uh, 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 I've been on a Bronson kick. And um, so I, I already had the DVD. So I had, but I hadn't seen it in about 10 years. So I had uh, uh, it sent up to Tel Aviv for me to watch it. And I watched it again and I watched it with a friend of mine. And so it's just a, a, I think a terrific example of a movie that, wow, this is aged really well. We, you know, we didn't realize what we had back then. All right. I mean, you know, it's not great, but it's a damn good little action movie, but it's like, but actually what we take for granted is like one, we're taking the fact that Charles, that, that there's a Charles Bronson and the Lee Marvin out there making movies. Okay, there is there is no Charles Bronson and Lee Marvin out there now that you can even put them in a, a, in, in a movie like this and they and they're men of that era and they're men with those faces and they have that kind of power and forget about the fact that they have such a history together. 
going back for so long. And that you can put those two guys in a movie. And then the fact that these two kind of getting old duffers are going to be out there in that cold. I mean, it, actually, the movie does a great job filming that white winter hellish wonderland that, you know, that they're, they're suffering through and their period snowshoes and their giant furs. And, <laughs> uh, uh, and, you know, and it's real physical filmmaking all the way through. I mean, uh, uh, you know, it was just considered, a, you know, okay, a, 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 a routine action movie. Good if you like those actors. But now you look at it right now. No, it's much more than it's it, it, it's it's much more than that. One, the look of it, the physical production of it, and then those guys in it. And actually, I'm not the biggest fan of Lee Marvin's performances for the most part. Uh, that much after the Dirty Dozen, especially in the '70s. To me, he was either when he was playing a tough guy, he was either boring. He was just this totem pole, or he or he was playing. Uh, 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 too bigly. I, I, I'm, I don't, I'm not a big fan of Lee Marvin playing comedy that much. I think he, he mm-hmm. overplays it. And then he, and he did that a lot in the 70s. This is actually one of my favorite performances of him in that era. He's kind of terrific in the film. Yeah. No, he's really good. I mean, the whole setup is basically that Bronson breaks up a dog. Bronson's a trap. He's like a trapper type or something like mountain, like a trapper yeah, mountain. whatever yeah he's a mountain guy he breaks up a dog fight at the beginning where ed louder who is clearly a favorite of yours and i totally get that he's great um yeah. so he breaks up this dog fight before one of the dogs is killed and he buys one of the dogs and ed, and it's ed louder's dog and he sort of buys it slash takes it and then ed louder I, I, it's, gonna, it's gonna die yeah. yeah it's literally almost dead and that's part of the reason he breaks it up which is a great setup um, and then Ed Lauder goes crying to Lee Marvin, who's sort of the authorities in this part of the, you know, almost mm-hmm. Canadian wilderness. And he is then joined by. Andrew- Mount- he's a Mountie. Oh, he's a Mountie too. Okay. Yeah. So Andrew Stevens yeah. is another Mountie. And so he's sort of the young and naive, you know, fresh faced Mountie. And Ed Lauder's like, you have to go get this guy. He took my dog. And so then Lee Marvin's like, fuck off. I'm not going to do that. And mm-hmm. they, then they go, uh, they get a posse together and go and try and take the dog. And Bronson ends up killing one of their guys. Then it becomes a manhunt. And mm-hmm. now Lee Marvin has to get involved. And yeah, so it just sort of becomes a reluctant manhunt because Lee Marvin knows. Well, it's, a, it's a classic scenario of the, it's a classic scenario that we've seen before, where, you know, through what we know as unjust circumstances. Uh, a guy is on the run from a posse led by somebody who knows that this is a dubious situation. He knows that this is a, a, a dubious man, but it's his job to follow it, follow it through anyway. Yeah. 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 Which that's... he even says, I, I love when Marvin says things like he's doing everything I would have done. Like, you know, yeah. but I'm still after him. And that's why, that's where I kept seeing the fugitive duality yeah. that was kind of runs through it. But they're both re- really good. They reflect each other really well in this, I thought. And everybody in the movie, I saw one of those things where everybody's well cast. Andrew Stevens, Looks yeah. terrific in his Mountie uniform when he, he does. shows up. He, he's well cast. Carl Weathers is Carl well Weathers, cast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Carl Weathers is one of the other guys, sort of a Mountie, I guess, as well. Yeah. And yeah, and then, you know, Ed Lauder's just got this great posse of goons that, you know, are just really fun to watch. And it's directed so Mark by... Mark and the John Milius guy, they're, they steal the show. They, they do. Steal the show. I mean, I think they're really, really interesting. <laughs> yeah, film. they have a great tension that's always ready to blow up. Where you're like, these two are going to kill each other at some point, and that's a great tension to have within a an already goony posse. But well, um, they also have that exchange back and forth with each other, where it's like, and I like this when it happens in a movie. And this is one of the things that actually suggests this movie has a little bit more depth than people gave it credit for. It, is they keep referring to an incident that happened before, but they don't go into any yeah. detail. Well, like remember what you it's did somebody's name right it yeah somebody's what? name it's somebody's name yeah. they keep saying it yeah yeah and it almost suggests like there was like a homosexual encounter or something <laughs> but like oh. it's never it's never clear <laughs> i told you don't bring that up <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. wait, you don't want me to bring up bernard i told yeah. you don't bring that up <laughs> yeah yeah 
Bernard, Bernard. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God, it's so funny. Yeah, I like Maury Chaikin a lot, and it's like one of my favorite Maury Chaikin roles ever. He's just so much fun in it. Um, I, I, it's one of my favorite Maury Chaikin roles, too. He's terrific. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's got a great, you know, it's well done. It's directed by Peter Hunt, who's a James Bond film editor and who did Iron yeah. Majesties. He actually did one of my favorite TV movies, Quentin, um, The Beasts Are on the Street, which is, of course, back to the animal attack thing. I really I've like heard that. It's a really good movie. I've never seen that. Movie. It's fun. It's, you know, a bunch of animals get loose from a, from a zoo and they start running all over the place. It's pretty fun. Um, but yeah, so I thought that was cool. It's Peter Hunt directing and, and I thought he did a good job. So um yeah, this was a nice little surprise. Not not a not a surprise ultimately because the cast was so strong. But like you yeah. say, it it held up. Well, I mean, it was a better first time watch than I even expected. And I was like, why did I wait so long to see it? It was yeah. that kind of thing. It's a, it's a also it's a terrific visual movie. I mean, because you're dealing you know, like, uh, like obviously I'm a big fan of movies that take place on the snow, and you know it's a really terrific snow movie and a terrific period snow movie. Yeah, absolutely. Which it's also I got. Have, Wearing the, the beaver pelts and the fur, weird fur caps. And it's a couple of years before First Blood. And it's and I remember when I first saw First Blood, the scene that always stuck with me was when he jumps off a cliff into a tree. And it yeah, has yeah, that yeah. exact scene <laughs> a couple yeah, yeah, of years yeah. earlier, you know. He has a cleaner lander in, in landing in this, but... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, so that one's that one's really solid. I definitely recommend people check out Death Hunt. 